Hi everyone, I'm Anna Anders. Today is uh, March 15th. This is the second YouTube video for prayer and meditation. Thank you for joining me. And um, going into March 15th, got to find it in this little book here. Um, and the book that I'm reading out of is The Promise of a New Day book. Okay, so there we have it. Gold for the instant lost its luster in his eyes, for there were countless treasures of the heart which it could never purchase. <laughs> Woo-wee! So powerful, guys, spiritually speaking. I gotta laugh. God, thank you. So I just got through talking about all the bling-bling that people collect, okay? <laughs> Including gold chains. <laughs> but, you know, I gotta say, people... When we collect things in the end, like my father used to say, things collect us. <laughs> and he was so right about that. So right. My father was so right about a lot of things. And shame on the people that avoided him. Shame on the people that didn't invite him. Shame on the people <laughs> that couldn't appreciate his mojo most so fully. Um, gosh, this hit home right away. I gotta be quiet and just read. Uh, but then again, maybe I need to just enjoy my laughter about it. God help us. <laughs> this is funny. It, and it's worthy of being reread, so I'm going to. Gold, for the instant, lost its luster in his eyes, for there were countless treasures of the heart, which it could never purchase. <laughs> God help us all. We're going to need it because in the end, you can't take that gold in your casket with you, okay? In the end, you can't take that coal. You can take the gold with you in the blast furnace, but it, when it's reduced to dust and ashes, it ain't going to mean shit. You know, what What was your spiritual life and path like your whole life? That's what we need to weigh and measure. How's that? I'm done talking. The mysterious thing about treasures of the heart is that they are countless, boundless, self-renewing, inexhaustible. When we love and are loved, trust and are trusted, this reciprocal relationship gives us those who love and trust us literally, trust us literally endless wealth. Only when that, only when the relationship is one-sided do we feel drained by our commitments. Oh boy, folks. Let me show you something. Here's my hand, okay? You see that hand? Can one hand, watch this. Can that one hand clap by itself? No, one hand cannot clap by itself. See this? See this? This is two hands here, okay? Two hands. Watch this. So, relationships, people, are two-sided. Takes two to tangle, okay? Um, and that's what I want to give a shout-out to. Getting revved up in my prayer and meditation video here, but I don't care. Let me go back to this. Let me go back to this. Only when the relationship is one-sided do we feel drained by our commitments. Love that is based on mutual understanding and respect will never drain us of our resources. Our fund of love is replenished even as it flows out of us, as through the act of loving generates more love. Fear can impede this miraculous process. Let me repeat that sentence because it's worthy of being repeated. Okay? Fear can impede this miraculous process. In general, we have to know ourselves pretty well and be quite secure in our own skins before we can make to someone else the glad and unconditional gift of ourselves. Love entails risk. The risk of being completely open and completely self-forgetful. But all success involves risk. And in this case, rewards are the greatest possibility. I will not let fear keep me from the treasures of the heart. I, hi, everyone. I'm humbly Anna Anders. I want to say this. I will not let fear keep me from the treasures of the heart. And I will not let fear keep me from the pleasures of the heart as well. There's no wickedness in my heart. My sacred heart is uh, full of sacred, genuine mojo. A lot of people want to misjudge it, and that's on them. But um, I got to say, folks, I'm so, uh, I'm so secure in my being, and that's all I want to say. Thank you, God. You have, a, you have a wonderful sense of spiritual humor with these readings. Okay. The next reading is out of the book Awakening. Thank you for tuning in, like I said earlier. And listening to these YouTube videos and supporting them. 
Okay, moving on. Primary selves and disowned selves. Primary selves and disowned selves. We become strongly identified with certain subpersonalities. These are the ones we unconsciously allow to run our lives and to make our decisions. These are called our primary selves. The opposite subpersonalities are often repressed or undeveloped. These are called our disowned selves. For example, your primary selves might be organized and orderly and like to plan ahead. Your disowned selves might be creative, chaotic, and spontaneous, or vice versa. Perhaps your primary self, selves are laid back and relaxed, and you've disowned your d aggressive, goal-oriented side, or vice versa. Your primary selves might be serious and responsible, and your disowned energies playful and carefree. What are, you, what are my primary selves? What are my disowned selves? Wow. Okay, so this is actually confronting me, and I appreciate this morning, this this morning, because you know what? I've been so serious. Hello, everyone. I'm humbly Anna Anders at ForGlobalPeace.com. I have been so serious lately that it's not even funny, like for a long time now. But we've had a lot of, um, how do I want to say this to you guys? In our sacred family tree, it with its entire history, We've had a lot of woundedness. And what I want to say is um, when our family tree was planted, it was planted with the seeds of drama, trauma, chaos, and alcoholism, and addiction, and affliction. Um, and that's the truth, honey. On, four, uh, on both sides of the family tree, four generations back is where I stopped going. Because um, I did an inventory of my mom, my dad, my grandparents, their parents, and then their parents' parents. And I did this when my grandmother, my mother's mother was alive still. So and we sat in her living room, uh, which was my father's home, 3216 Seymour Avenue. My dad bought that family home. And that home still exists today in uh, our family tree history, okay? And matter of fact, that's the exact street where Ariel Castro would hold the girls hostage for over 10 years, believe it or not. It's so sickening. But anyways, um, what I want to say, I'm going to go back to this reading again. What are my primary selves and what are my my disowned selves? Well, I got to tell you, the playful kid in me, my inner child, I needs more fun stuff to do. And I'm going to follow up on that. And I'm watching my cat and dog chase each other. This is fun. All right, so I'm shutting off the video. Everybody have a blessed day. I'm humbly Anna Anders here at home trying to make some peace flags. Peace out, everybody, and may... The corruption and disruption of human life and human values be exposed daily. Bye-bye.